Welcome to my chambers. Hillary Clinton and the FBI are back in the news because the New York Times did an expose just a few days ago on the effect the FBI likely had on the 2016 presidential election. And in the course of their interviewing, they interviewed Mrs. Clinton and they asked her why she thought she lost. I think she lost because she was a flawed candidate. She failed to animate the base of the Democratic Party and quite frankly, she failed to state principled reasons to the electorate as to why she should be elected president. Mrs. Clinton thinks she lost because of the FBI involvement in the campaign, and she may have a point. We know that the FBI conducted a criminal investigation of her failure to safeguard state secrets that were contained in emails that she used when she was Secretary of State. We know that because the FBI revealed the existence of that investigation. It's not supposed to reveal the existence of investigations because the federal rules, the rules of the Justice Department, the rules of the FBI prohibit that to protect the reputation of the person being investigated if they're not charged. We all know that if somebody is being investigated by the FBI, the presumption is they must have done something wrong. That's why the rules say keep it secret. The FBI revealed the existence of the investigation. The FBI publicly said they were not going to seek an indictment and then publicly listed all the evidence against her. Why would they do this? Why would they reopen up the investigation two weeks before the presidential election? Say they had a treasure trove of more emails and then a week later say, oh, well, we were wrong. We had seen these emails after all. These are the ones from Anthony Weiner's laptop. I don't know why the FBI put its thumb on the scales of this political campaign. I don't know why they properly conducted their investigation of the Trump campaign and whether or not there was any involvement with the Russians by not talking about it, but improperly conducted their investigation of Mrs. Clinton by talking about it, by stopping it before it was over, by starting it after it had ended, and by listing all the evidence bad for her that they were willing to overlook. I don't know the answers to those questions, but I do know that the American public and Hillary Clinton are entitled to them. Welcome to my chambers. Fight the good fight. For freedom! In the past week, the case against Hillary Rodham Clinton has gotten stronger, not only for espionage, which is the failure to keep secure national security secrets that have been entrusted to you for safekeeping, but also the case of public corruption. The espionage case got stronger because of two smoking guns in the forms of emails that the State Department released. One was from Mrs. Clinton to a subordinate saying, if you can't get me that secret information via secure fax, send it via a non-secure fax. And the other was from Mrs. Clinton to another subordinate saying, I understand you're sending me some documents that are marked secret. Remove the marking on the document before you send it to me. Both of these emails show a propensity to deceive and they both show a rejection of her obligation to maintain the state secrets that were entrusted to her for safekeeping. At the same time that these emails were released, the FBI let it be known to those of us who watch these things for a living that it has commenced another investigation of Mrs. Clinton. This one looks to see if any decisions were made by her in her official capacity as the Secretary of State to favor her husband's foundation or her husband's speaking gigs. You see some private people use their own time and money to examine the public documents of the Clinton Foundation. And they found an amazing coincidence between favorable decisions by the State Department on foreign entities and those same foreign entities making contributions to the Clinton Foundation. Where will this lead? We'll find out soon. The FBI will soon make a recommendation to the Justice Department about whether or not she should be indicted. If they make that recommendation and the White House rejects it, there will be political blood on the floor. Much more to come. In a way that she would have preferred, the Justice Department has decided to conduct an investigation to see if there should be another investigation of Mrs. Clinton. Too many investigations all at once. If Jim Comey was fired by the president as the director of the FBI for the reasons stated by the attorney general when he recommended Comey's firing, namely that Comey dropped the ball 
in the Hillary Clinton investigation, shouldn't the Justice Department pick up that ball and run with it? That's investigation number one. Investigation number two has to do with giving a Kremlin-controlled corporation an interest in a uranium mine in the United States after their American representatives made a donation of $148 million to the Clinton Foundation, permission that the State Department willingly granted after the, the donation was made. Is there anything illegal about that? That's going to be investigated. And did the FBI attempt to influence the outcome of the 2016 presidential election by attempting to pay a former British intelligence agent to dig up dirt on then Mr. Donald Trump when he was running for president. That's going to be the subject of an investigation. Here's the rub. The Justice Department is investigating whether or not it should hire an outside investigator. And it's ridiculous. Why don't they just do their job? Each of these things should be investigated. There's enough evidence to present to a grand jury to indict Mrs. Clinton on both the email scandal and the Uranium One scandal on whether or not the FBI attempted to influence the outcome of the election and who paid this British agent to dig up dirt on Donald Trump and whether taxpayer dollars were used, that does require further investigation. But all this can be done by the Justice Department. We don't need another independent counsel. We just need the Justice Department to do its job. Unless the people that run the Justice Department don't want to investigate their predecessors because they fear that their successors might investigate them. Let me suggest this. If you have that fear, you have no place in government. Welcome to my chambers. I think that what we've got here is a case of overclassification. I forget your permission. I am not concerned about it. I am not worried about it. And no Democrat or American should be either. The questions were, Secretary Clinton. The questions were, who gave you permission to cooperate there, there, with President there, Obama? There was no permission to be asked. It had been done by my predecessors. It was permitted. I didn't have to ask anyone. If you get indicted, would you drop out? Oh, for goodness. That is not going to happen. I'm not even answering that question. So that from last night in South Florida, Hillary Clinton, a strong reaction when I asked about the email controversy. I want to bring the judge, senior judicial analyst, Anna Napolitano with me. Judge, good morning to you. Morning, Jorge Ramos was doing the questioning there. It wasn't just the email he was asking about. It was the server. Yes. Legally speaking, a significant distinction. Why? Because her predecessors, and, and let's identify them, Colin Powell and Condoleezza Rice, did not have servers in their own home. Did, did the, the, the Secretary of State has two email streams, a regular email stream and a secret email stream. Mrs. Clinton hired at her own expense an information technologist to divert both email streams to the home server. Secretary uh, Powell and Secretary Rice did nothing of the sort. You're really comparing apples and oranges here. So when, when we talk talk about this are we asking the wrong question about email when we should be asking about the private server sometimes we are sometimes this is very very complex I, I suggest that uh, Jose Ramos has an excellent understanding Jorge. of or excuse me Ramos has an excellent understanding of what happened uh, and and asked the right question and in one of her answers bill she revealed inadvertently I think to the FBI which watches her debates a proclivity to mislead because she said to Mr. Ramos just as she's been saying for a year now I neither sent nor received any email that was marked classified marked classified we know and the FBI knows and she knows that nothing is marked classified and yet she continues to mislead the questioner thereby sending if you will a dog whistle to the FBI her natural inclination is not to tell the truth um, he said who gave you permission is that the way to phrase it well I don't know that I would have phrased it that way but but when she said I didn't need permission that's right. She, she said is revealing there was no permission to be asked. It was permitted was correct. her it, answer. She, she is revealing an ignorance of the law. Now we're not talking about national security law. Now we're talking about who owns the emails of a government worker uh, when they pass on, uh, on a government instrument. Answer, the government does. And so when your emails are demanded, 
you can't hold back and say these are mine, these are yours. The government decides which is which are government and which are which are private. He wrote in the Washington Times the other day, Hillary Clinton's false hopes. Why false? If she believes that this will go away, that belief is a false belief. The FBI agents who are investigating her constitute the same team that investigated General Petraeus, who they believe got off very easily. The evidence that they have amassed against her is, is a quantum leap more than what they had against General Petraeus. This is not going to go away, no matter how she may hope or wish that it will. Uh, that reaction last night, I mean, what, what did you think? It very, was... very, very, very bad, uh, very bad reaction. Is that what the sense point. was? Yes. Like, you know, 69 she... years is going to end in an indictment? Yeah, she should come have, on. She should have been prepared uh, for that type of question. And maybe she wasn't expecting it to come last night, but she's a professional. Got it. Thank you, Judge. Welcome. All right. Anna Napolitano, thanks.